And before we begin, as always, I wanted to introduce Noma's stroll coordinator and Inwood's own, Martin Collins, who has a wonderfully delicious special statement to share with us tonight. Um, Martin. Oh, yes, I do. And I uh, want to welcome uh, everybody. Thank you to uh, Nerea. Thank you to Michelle and Joanna. And welcome to everyone who's joining us this evening on our Stay Home Open studio. Tonight's sponsor is Chalk NYC, located at 4996 Broadway and West 212th Street. It is a fabulous pastry shop uh, started by husbands Jamal Edwards and Brad Doles, who together bring over 50 years of culinary and hospitality experience. Everything at Chalk NYC is delicious. Their croissants, muffins, savory uh, tarts, and all their cookies and pastries. And I have to tell you, you must try their chocolate chip cookies. They are absolutely fantastic. And Chalk's NYC delectable uh, classic chocolate cake, red velvet jubilation, and uh, classic vanilla cake. Their homemade ice cream and sorbets are outstanding. <laughs> and they have uh, great sourdough baguettes available at noon every day. Chalk NYC's business model embraces our entire community. All of their employees, contractors, and equipment are, and vendors are local, and we are so grateful to Chalk NYC. They are open Tuesday through Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please see Chalk NYC's website, chalknyc.com, for a complete menu and to place an order. Follow them at Chalk NYC on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are very grateful to and thank Chalk NYC for sponsoring tonight's Stay Home Open Studio with Emmanuel Abreu. Nerea? Thanks again, Martin. And thanks to Chalk NYC for your support and for your delicious items. I hope everyone has eaten already, because if not, um, that might be a little bit tough. Um, thanks to all of you again for being here tonight for our 10th virtual open studio. Um, as Michelle mentioned, my name is Miria Leva Gutierrez and I am acting executive director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. Um, before I introduce tonight's artist, I wanted to thank a number of entities who are supporting this program, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, the New York City Department of Small Business Services, Inwoods Merchants Association, the Washington Heights Bid, Uptown Collective, and Heights Sites. Thank you for supporting us and for supporting our community and allowing us to do what we love to do. Um, and again, thanks to all of you, uh, those are, who are here for the first time uh, and those who are returning. We are so grateful to have each and every one of you. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is our 10th virtual program um, and we are just consistently so proud of the talent and creativity of all of you, of the artists and of collectors uh, who have been with us weekly and who have shared their work, their processes, their insights, who have lifted us through these incredibly challenging times, um, and also who have, through their own creative journeys, encouraged us to reflect on our own lives. So thank you very, very much. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce tonight's artist. Um, born and raised in Inwood, Emmanuel Abreu is a photographer, videographer, whose work includes professional wedding photography, travel photography, landscapes, streetscapes, cityscapes, and portraiture. He is deeply, as you all know, connected to our community and has collaborated with the Uptown Washington Heights Inwood area since the beginning of his career. He became involved with Word Up Community Bookstore back in 2011 as one of the very first uh, volunteers, along with Veronica Liu, uh, and today serves as their web and media manager. Uh, through Word Up, he met uh, Mina Laura um, and Bob Braswell, uh, and today works uh, as the communications associate for the People's Theater Project. Uh, he, as Emmanuel DJ Boy Abreu, is also the recipient of a grant from the 2013 Nomas Creative Grant Program, made possible by the J.P. Morgan Chase Foundation and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, which led to his Observe the Heights project, which documents every intersection in Washington Heights and Inwood. It is an ongoing project, and if you haven't already seen it, which I'm sure so many of you have, I urge you to do so. And in 2014, he traveled to Mexico as one of three artists and the very first photographer selected for the prestigious 360 Xochitl Quetzal Summer Artist Residency Program in Central Mexico. 
He is an incredibly prolific artist. A look on his website alone leads to gallery after gallery of images that capture the joy and beauty of the human experience. Indeed, COVID has not seemed to slow him down. Just in 2020, there are a trove of images of uptown fireworks, very timely this week, uptown marches for black lives, seductive sunset scenes against the backdrop of the George Washington Bridge, views down local streets like Dykeman at night, bike rides, late night walks, uptown claps, and people. There is also a gallery dedicated to Uptown New York City versus COVID-19, a uh, title I love, uh, which is a visual essay in human resilience and the collective experience. As I mentioned, travel is integral to Emmanuel's life and to his art. In fact, every year for his birthday, he travels somewhere both to leave the city and to engage in his passion for travel photography. And we are so fortunate that we will get to see the fruits of some of those trips tonight. Some of his work has been featured on media outlets like the local Manhattan Times, the New York Times, and local blogs, as well as sites like the Huffington Post and Gothamist. We are so delighted that he is here with us tonight to share his work and to share some of the stories that help bring those works to life. Emmanuel, all yours. You need to unmute yourself. That is the phrase of the year. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Um, holy shit, what an intro. I, <laughs> you know, every time I watch one of these, I would go, man, did these people write all this stuff themselves? Because I cannot write that much crap about myself. Like, I really, I <laughs> just talking to my friend before, just like, I need to write more because apparently I have 10 seconds of an intro and you went in, you did your research. Holy crap. <laughs> that was amazing. Um, just want to thank everyone, first of all, for being here. Um, <clears throat> it's very humbling and beautiful to see everybody's faces, um, especially those that, who I haven't seen in a while. So that's awesome. Um, glad to see that you're alive and well enough to open your computer. Um, <laughs> I, uh, don't know what else to say. I, oh, also just real quick, Chalk NYC, I work on their Indiegogo video. I just thought that was cool that they were the sponsors of today's video, of today's, um, session. And I've worked with them before. They're a really dope couple. If you haven't been there yet, I absolutely recommend it. Spend $20, $30. It'll be worth it. Trust me. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm trying to, I, I try to watch my weight and my bank account. And when I go in there, it all goes out the window. Um, <laughs> um, I want to shout out Lead Black because if it wasn't for Uptown Collective, I, I mean, maybe I would be where I am, but I know I met Lead and he was kind of my first like breaking my, uh, <laughs> popping my Uptown Arts cherry. <laughs> he knew I would say something like that. Because um, through lead and the, and the parties, I met, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I met Mino and Bob through um, Word Up or through the Uptown Collective holiday party. Because I feel like I, I met one of them through the party and then the other <laughs> at Word Up. But anyway. Um, I met a ton of people through Uptown Collective and like Noma as well. I, I, I think I, I met, who did I meet? Uh, um, anyway, I, Sandra, I think, and Joanna, like, you know, um, and Mike Fiddleson, um, and all you people. Um, I see my video is late. Should I, should I just- Hi everyone. My name is Emmanuel Abreu. And I am a photographer and videographer in Washington Heights in Inwood, New York City. And today I'm going to show you a few images and talk about how I made them. So we'll talk about this one right here real quick. I was actually inspired by a photograph that I saw on Instagram once. Uh, I completely forget the artist's name, but this photographer captured this pigeon just kind of overlooking the George Washington Bridge. It's one of my favorite pictures of the bridge. And it just kind of looks like the bird is enjoying the view and like really taking in the bridge. So I saw this bird just kind of hanging out. You can see in the background this famous building in London. And I just thought, okay, this is going to be a dope image. And it is. 
This one was taken in Guadalajara, Mexico. So I actually was setting up for a completely different picture. I was setting down my camera with the ND filter, which is a neutral density filter, in order to capture the fountain with a slow shutter, which means it would have smoothed the water. As I placed my camera down, I saw this woman walking towards us and I scrambled to set the settings right on my camera. And I was only able to capture two frames, which is this one and one where she was taking another step, maybe right almost off frame. And I just felt super lucky. This is easily one of my favorite pictures, if not my favorite picture that, that I took in my 41 days in Mexico. I was actually in Mexico after being picked as one of the three artists for an artist residency. And because of the support that I received from local residents and my neighbors, I was able to raise enough money to not only get there, but also buy new equipment to capture life in Mexico. And I am so thankful that so many people donated to my online campaign um, and it made the trip so much better. So thank you, Uptown. The story behind this one is a perfect example of how far I would push myself to get a perfect image or just to capture something without really knowing what it's going to be. I went to go see this bridge called the Rainbow Bridge and I got there early enough to see it during the day and see the sun come down. I was ready to leave and this man that was also taking photos next to me, we started to chat and he asked me if I was going to stay for some fireworks and I was like, what fireworks? He said, yeah, there's gonna be fireworks. They happen every Saturday. So I stayed completely ignoring the fact that I was very hungry and I had a very bad headache and I decided to get some food and some aspirin. So after I finished eating, I realized that along this mall that was that was close by, there were hundreds of photographers lined up. I just started walking around trying to find a good spot and found this space in a corner. And I asked if I could take a corner because there seemed to be nobody there. And there was this family sitting there saying, well, we kind of saying like, we've been waiting here. And after going back and forth on, on Google Translate, the father allowed me to take the far corner and it was a perfect spot. It was really nice. And then when the fireworks were about to begin he actually handed me a mini tripod that I was able to use and it worked perfectly he was just super nice after you know this American douchebag comes over here to take a space I, I couldn't love this picture more I, I absolutely love fireworks and I completely just ignored my health to get this image story behind this one is a little crazy on this day my friend and I went into the the castle area of Mont Saint Michel and by the time we got up there it was too late we couldn't get into the castle so when we came back down it was nighttime and at the entrance there was just two feet of water and we could not leave without walking through the water so we had to walk through the water and like our, basically our legs were just soaked luckily we caught the last bus that was coming to the area to pick people up and as we were waiting I ran about 200 feet, maybe a little more, towards some benches because I had this image in my mind. Put my camera down on a small tripod, set up the exposure and got it right on time. The bus passes by and I got this image and I just think it's a beautiful image. You can see the castle in the background and the light streaks from the bus. And after I took this picture, I had to run to the bus. And I don't think I saw the picture until I got to the bus and I saw it and I, I just, I went crazy. I thought it was amazing. This was taken in Mocha, Dominican Republic. So I was out walking down this mountain. I just started taking pictures of just random people coming outside. I ran into these two kids who were playing outside and I asked them, is it cool if I take some pictures of you guys? And they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, so uh, I started taking pictures of them and their mom comes out and she's like, oh, hey, what's going on? And I just said, oh, I'm just taking pictures. You know, I'm here on vacation. And I, I, I honestly don't remember what I said to her. And she started laughing and I said, and I said, can I take a picture of you? And she said something about her her hair and she just started laughing and I got this image and I showed it to her and she loved it. And afterwards, um, she actually invited me inside for a cake. <laughs> and it was Dominican cake, which is freaking amazing. Um, and I, I think I hung out in there for like half an hour with her three kids and it was just this awesome encounter 
with a family living on the mountainside. Cuba. Cuba's beautiful. Beautiful people, beautiful cars, beautiful buildings. The crazy thing about the time that I went to Cuba though is something I couldn't have planned. I go, I go on vacation every year for my birthday and the night before my actual birth date, Fidel Castro died. So I was over there and I was woken up at three o'clock in the morning by my, by the host of where I was staying. And he just said, Fidel's dead. I was up for the rest of the night. And the first thing I did was go outside and capture the reactions of everybody. And I attended, I guess it was a funeral or a vigil, but the whole city of Havana was, it was, it was a mandate to attend this. And if you didn't attend, you could lose your job. But there were many people crying, um, people cheering. It was a very surreal experience. And I actually got this frame outside my door where street vendors sell a bunch of random stuff. And I found this awesome frame. And I just thought, Cuba. This one is one of my dreams come true. Ever since I was a kid, I would go outside and watch fireworks outside my building and from my window. I didn't know my life would head towards photography, but I always had these images in my head of the fireworks. And when I did get into photography, one of my dreams was to capture fireworks uptown in beautiful ways. And I think I've gotten some great pictures, but this really puts it all together. You can see fireworks in Washington Heights and in Inwood. The way I put this together, these, this didn't all obviously all happen at the same time. There were fireworks coming up from different streets. And if you know Inwood, um, it gets very loud on July 4th. Different blocks actually compete against each other. So you can see a bunch of them go out, go up at once on one street and then another street it's just a bunch of crazy fireworks. Led Black and myself decided to go up to Fort Tryon and watch the fireworks from up there. And I, I almost cried that night of how beautiful this looked. And so I just captured a bunch of photos and I stitched them together in this panoramic photo. Yeah, I'm just, I'm in love with this picture. It's one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. So that's it guys. That's a quick tour of some of my images and just a little part of my apartment. I hope you guys enjoyed and I look forward to hearing from you guys any point. Contact me at info at um, That's also my website, eobreuvisuals.com. On Instagram, it's eobreuvisuals. And from there, you can see a bunch of other stuff. much for sharing that beautiful piece of art with us and for sharing those stories. Um, before, we have a few questions already, or we have a question in the chat room, and I think it's probably one of the most uh, appropriate, especially uh, talking a little bit about your love for, for the fireworks. So, uh, Michael Palmamir, do you have a question that you'd like to ask? I think you're, are you muted? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. There we go. Okay. Hola, Manuel. Well, I was being a little cheeky when I, I, I wrote it actually in the chat and I said, where are you going to be on July 4th? <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Inwood. That's <laughs> where everything's going to happen. Macy's is trying to do this shit every night, but Inwood has been doing it for a month. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be walking around um, Inwood and maybe Washington Heights. Um, for the past few weeks, I've actually been going, been walking around and biking around, capturing um, mm -hmm. some fireworks with my camera and my drone. Um, Manhattan Times, as you can see, uh, chose to feature me, Deborah Lee, um, chose to feature me, my photos, and use my photo as the cover for not only Man Times, but the Bronx Free Press, which is awesome. Um, and I think after that, Telemundo hit me up <laughs> and, and they wanted to interview me about my photos. And they actually wanted me to talk shit about Inwood, but I didn't, so. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I actually picked up a gig just walking around. Some dude was like, dude, can you, fil can you film us on July 4th? And I was like, money to do what I'm already doing? Yes, please. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Okay, I think we have another question from Elaine Bettis. Are you here, Elaine? Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? I am in commute on the bus, so if you hear a lot of oh. noise, it's... <laughs> 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 um, so my question was to Emmanuel, um, what made you realize that um, photography is something you wanted to pursue? And then um, how did you start that path? Um, well, my grandfather was a World War II photographer. I'm kidding. I love that. <laughs> I, uh, I, if, if, uh, Michelle, if you want to pull up the, the photos, um if you look at the lego uh, did you get the lego one i guess if you go to maybe not anyway i i uh i had this um little lego figure which you know i don't want to run and get it now but <laughs> um i called him officer pepe he was a little mexican officer i don't know why that was his backstory i just kind of made it up but i would i would take him around and take pictures of him everywhere and people enjoyed it so until to, to the point where that one of my friends once was like this could be in a gallery and looking back at them they're not that great but <laughs> but that gave me the confidence to pursue like real photography um, and the reason I actually just started doing that in the first place was because my younger sister was taking photography in college and I and I kind of wanted to get closer to her in a kind of unconscious way like it wasn't con consciously on purpose I just kind of did it to kind of bond with her there he is um <laughs> and uh and yeah so I, I just kind of accidentally fell into it and I just I, I love it so much and um when people started paying me I was like this is crazy how um how exciting this job is it, you know people say it doesn't feel like a job but sometimes it does <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> Did I answer the full question? I don't know if I answered everything. Well, the second part was just like, what made you, um, like what, how did you start that path? But I think you did answer that in terms of like uh, learning it from your sister and like oh, right. even, so. well, but thank you. To, to, to really answer the question, my sister was actually the one learning. I was just fucking around. Um, until like I, I, I got serious um, and my girlfriend at the time, this is 11 years ago, she got me a professional camera and then I started going, okay, I need to learn this. So trial and error, YouTube, Google, you know, books. I, I, I taught myself how to, how to do everything. And then eventually I shouted out Led before, but once I met Led, he, like, he, he actually featured my photo on uptowncollective.com um, that gave me the confidence to, like, that, that made me realize, oh, more than just, like, my family likes this, you know, so, so I, you know, I continued to learn and then shot events for free. I shot NOMA events for free, um, Word Up stuff for free, People's Theater Project, like, a bunch of uptown organizations, and I kind of had the plan to, to shoot a bunch of uh, nonprofit um, events for one year, um, for free as I learn. And then after that, we charge, you know, like 50 bucks here, hundred bucks there, whatever. But, but that's how I learned. I learned by just kind of throwing myself into it. You know, nobody told me to do it. I just did it. You know? Great. Thanks for the question, Elaine. Um, there's another question, um, from Kelly Burdick. Kelly, are you here? I'm here. Hi. Um, Kelly? I want to, Hey, how are you? <laughs> Been a minute. Um, I want to know where's next. Like, what else? Once global um, travel is a thing again, like, where are you headed? Where do you want to go? Uh, good question. I <laughs> I already bought tickets to Spain. <laughs> I bought my flight to Spain for November, but I don't think that's gonna happen because Americans think that the pandemic is over. So, <laughs> um. That was my next plan. I, I still want to go, but I want to do like I did last year, which was go to two different countries. Um, so, so if I can, I want to do, um, 
Iceland and Spain if if it's affordable. You know, because I, I was actually going to do Iceland and France, and it was it was affordable. But then I saw these islands and uh, off of Portugal, um, San Miguel, and I just I had to go there. So yeah, so sorry Iceland. I'll come back. I mean I'll go. I'll come back. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks for the question. <laughs> uh, Emmanuel, you shared with us also some stills that I think that um, you maybe wanted to talk about some works that were meaningful to you. I think Michelle has those. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of those. Sure. Um, so, okay, I could talk about this one. This was recent. Um, this is at one of the Uptown marches. Um, this was from, what's the park on 167? Um, whatever, the, the little park on 167, from there to 111. Mitchell, there you go. Mitchell, 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 Mitchell Square. <laughs> um, this march was basically in solidarity of, of Black, Black Lives Matter with the Uptown community, which is you know most, mostly Latino, and it's kind of trying to take, try to, um, uh, take control, take take control of our own narrative, um, because there there is a there there are entities and people out there that are trying to separate um, the communities of black and brown people. With and we all know black and brown is basically one community. Um, so that was one of that was that's one from one of the marches. Um, and I just found there were so many people playing music, and this person just looked so happy. So. I love capturing joy, so I got that, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, you talked a little bit, or we mentioned a little bit about your um, project, um, Observe, um, uh, uh, and, and, I, and you said you wanted to talk a little bit about that, the Observe the Heights project and, and what that looks like. And you talked about the fact that this is sort of an ongoing um, project. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I don't know if we have some of that here to share. I think if we were, were... Uh, observe the heights.com. I guess you could just kind yeah, of we could that. But um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and, and what your plans are sort of, you know, as you can this continues to evolve. Sure. So, so the, the actual photography is already kind of done. I just have them in a in a queue, just kind of waiting to upload them. But so much stuff has been happening that I kind of keep forgetting to, to continue it. Um, but the whole project started um, with, with the thought of just while I was walking around the Heights and Inwood, I would always see something interesting. You know, I would always see something and I, and I would have the thought, what if I just took a picture of every intersection? And I mean, I didn't know that it would be that it would actually be a very hard thing to do um, because there's not very interesting things in every single intersection, but it pushed me to creatively um, capture uh, places that maybe, you know, at first glance wasn't very interesting. Um, and when Noma, I, I know Noma had the, the creative um, grants I think for a couple of years already, but this is the first year that I applied and I just thought this would be perfect to one, not only allow me to, you know, have the time to do this and not worry about, you know, not worry about making money somehow um, for a bit, but also be able to physically show these images. Um, and what I did was I, I chose uh, four, was it four locations or five locations? I forget. Uh, Martin might remember, um, but there were four or five galleries. There were um, uh, Piccany, um, the yoga studio on 177, uh, is it? 176? Um, what else? Uh, the senior home on 160 something. Man, this is, how long ago was this? I'm forgetting all these places now. But there were, there were four or five locations. Um, that I chose, and I and I basically put all the images in a grid, um, and it was hard because they there are about 450 images, um, 
well, there are more because, you know, I had to obviously narrow them down, but um, this took about a year, a year and a half maybe to shoot everything. Um, Cause I honestly thought I would finish <laughs> in like a month, but no, it was like hours and hours every day. Um, and it was fun. Cause I, I would go out and not only shoot, but I would talk to people outside and part of the project, part of the physical project was to put these in these frames and the frames themselves had um, people's writings on them saying what they love about Uptown. So it was kind of like, this is my way of showing love to Uptown, my love to Uptown, for Uptown, sorry. And I just wanted to see what everybody else thought. And yeah, there were some great messages um, written on these things, especially the kids. Like, I love basketball, you know, <laughs> like, I love seeing <laughs> kids writing. Um, yeah, so I really thank Noma for, for allowing me to do that. Of course, I would think it's sort of an interesting kind of, you know, um, sort of second phase project would be to go back maybe, you know, 10 years later and see how those intersections mm. have changed, you know, um, to go to those exact places, you know, is there a new paint, is there, you know, just sort of be interesting to see, you know, documenting um, those intersections over time. You know, something yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> be interesting. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that's probably you know. I think that that notion too. I mean, one of the things I think is so interesting um, about your work. I mean, you talk a lot about joy, and and a couple of people have mentioned that, um, and you know, your work really does um, convey that sort of sense of of human joy. Um, and um, you know, I think especially during this this time, um, you know, as somebody who's sort of um, looks for that and 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 sort of um, whose work is is really kind of engaged in, in that that idea um, how, how is covid sort of how, how are you how, how are you finding those places um, do you, is it is it more difficult or are they always there or, or how would you think about or how would you talk about um, that idea of, of joy joyfulness in, in your work today um, versus four months ago for example yeah. I think Uptown, um, and specifically the different cultures that live within Uptown, um, and I think Uptown has a culture in itself too, no matter what your background is, but um, I think because of all the different cultures and the, and the, simila the similarities between them, um, it's very easy to, to kind of, I don't want to say ignore the, the, the negative with like the pandemic but to kind of put it aside because they're still um because we still have to live you know we try we're trying to stay alive but we still want to live um so i see that in the community a lot i see um well there was one there was one moment that almost brought a tear to my eye um i was walking after shopping at a supermarket and somehow I was able to capture this picture. It's on film, so I haven't developed it. So I'm sorry, I can't show it yet. Um, but I was, I was coming from the supermarket and I saw uh, there was a, what you, a crossing guard, um, uh, a woman crossing guard who I've seen, uh, I've kind of seen I think my whole life. Um, and she was, she was outside of IS-52 on Academy and she was telling somebody to to go ahead and cross, or no, I think she was telling them to stop, uh, but there were no, there were no cars, and this guy was crossing the street towards her, and he was like, it's fine, it's fine, and he was like laughing, and I think he was listening to music, um, and he just went up to her, and this was a month ago, two months ago, like this was kind of peak COVID, <laughs> um, which I guess we'll get back to, don't worry guys, it's coming back, um, <laughs> uh, so he, he took her, and there was just two people in the street dancing, merengue or salsa, but they were dancing. And it was something that, like that's, that defines Uptown for me. Like that, that, I've seen that my whole life, but I didn't think I would see it for a while because everybody was physically, literally separated from each other, staying at home. And I saw that and I just thought, oh my God, we're gonna be fine. We're totally gonna be fine. <laughs> So that kind of mentality is what I keep finding, you know, barbers in the street, you know, in the parks still giving haircuts. Sure, it's dangerous. And I am not 
saying that people should do this, but what I'm saying is that people are still happy and I'm, and I'm finding that joy and it's not hard to find. That's really, that's a, a lovely thing. And I think, I think it doesn't, and I, I'm here reading these comments and, and you should definitely take a minute to read some of these, but this idea of, of talking about the, the essence of, of Uptown that you, that you're able um, to, to capture and this idea of this in the moment um, uh, uh, quality of, of your work. Um, and, and again, sort of, you know, finding, finding the joy uh, um, that, that surrounds uh, the community that is sort of, you know, so integral um, uh, and, and so, so clearly evident uh, in your works. And, and I'm just looking here at some of these that Michelle has, has put up. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience with the marches uptown and, and, um, and, and what that's been like? Um, sure. I, I mean, I, I guess I could talk more about just the marches in general, because I feel like the Uptown Marches kind of just got started within the past few weeks, um, past two weeks or so, three weeks, uh, which is which is fine. I, I'm not trying to say anything negative about it, but my, my first experiences with the marches was um, mostly downtown, which is why I'm so happy that Uptown is doing it now. Uh, but this march right here that you're showing, um, actually for me, it started in, in the Bronx on 3rd Ave, um, and 140, what is it, 149th, I think, that, you know, that intersection where, you know, it's a very famous intersection or popular intersection. Um, so it started marching from there and thank God I was on my bike because it went, it made it all the way to the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, and right after, right on the other side of this bridge, um, people were getting arrested. I didn't know this because at this point I turned back because I was tired. <laughs> I was just done. Um, but but the energy of, of the marches um, is something that I know I'm not the only one that needed it. Um, it was cathartic. It was beautiful to see everybody out there. Um, most people were trying to, their best to, to socially distance. Most people had their masks on. Um, I know it's uh, obviously it's, it's not the safest thing to do, but I think it's one of the most important things to do at this moment. Um, and just to be able to be part of this continuing struggle, uh, not struggle, this continuing fight, um, makes me feel like, um, there's actually hope for this country or the people in the country. Um, because right before this, honestly, I, I was posting this on Instagram and stuff that I kind of feel like leaving this country because I feel unsafe. You know, I felt... And, and the way our leadership was um, handling the, the COVID crisis, I just thought if I was an older person, if I was, you know, uh, um, in, in, in bad health, if I was, you know, if I was, uh, if I, if I was in danger of, of actually getting seriously ill or dying from this virus, which I mean, I don't know if I am or not, but statistically I'm not. But if I was, I wouldn't want to live in this country because it doesn't feel safe at all. Um, sure, I could take my own measures, but if nobody else is doing it, <laughs> you know, especially if the leadership is telling you not to do it, then what the fuck? So I, so as, so as soon as these marches started, um, def I mean, they started for a very negative thing but the 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 fact that they that they are active and just the the sheer amount of people that have been joining all over the world just gave me this this huge um boost in in confidence of of the people in this country not the leader the leadership sucks so <laughs> so i'm hoping that all the young people that have been marching are the ones that are going to be our leaders um in the future so so I have hope for that. Yeah, that's what the marches have done for me. Um, I think Regina has a question. Regina, did you have a question about a particular photograph? Yes. Uh, let me say I love your pho photography and I love uh, your sense of of life and and your love for our neighborhood. Thank you. Um, Hi. <laughs> there's uh, one. Uh, 
photo that I saw called Cluster in the Clouds. And if you look closely, you could see my building. And oh. uh, so I was just wondering, how did you get up so high? Which photo was that? Was it, was it a fireworks one? Yeah, fireworks one. Oh, uh, yeah, that was with my drone. <laughs> with your drone? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. How, how does that work? How do you do that? So the technology in drones have advanced so much in the past few years. The first drone I got, I actually got my first drone with, yeah, there it is. Um, the first drone I got was because I got, I got funded with the Indiegogo for my, the Mexico art in, uh, residency. But I lost that drone over Fort Tryon Park because the wind took it. <laughs> but <laughs> um, over time, I've lost another, I lost two drones in total. But the, the new drones, what they have is, so this, this is a long exposure, which is, which is something that you need to do on a tripod, right? Because the camera has to be perfectly still. And if you can see, you can see in the background that there's like blur, um, but the, the foreground building is pretty sharp. And it's because there's the, the gimbal technology has advanced so much that even in the middle of the air, somehow it, it, the, the, the drone could actually keep the camera still for, I don't know how many seconds, I've tried five seconds and that never works, but around three seconds, that's like the sweet spot. And I've gotten a few pictures like this all over uptown. So I, I just kind of rode around on my bike and caught up to people that were blasting fireworks. And I would ask them, you know, if they were doing more and if they were, I would stick around and, and get some pictures. So I've gotten some of my best, if not the best fireworks photography doing this. Um, but thank you for asking that. Yeah, this is, this is a whole new venture in my photography. This, this isn't actually the one. The one that I cluster, cloud, cluster in the clouds is even higher up. Huh, I wonder which one that is. Was it on, on the Instagram feed? Mm, not sure where I saw it. Facebook? I'm to look at my Instagram. <laughs> it could have been with the Manhattan Times. Was that that one that you just showed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the Manhattan Times. Yeah, maybe check. I think it might have been yeah. that one. And it looks down on the um, on Fort George Hill. And down oh. there, you can see my my building. I know which one you're talking about. Let's see if we can see that. There it is. Cluster in the clouds. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Down here. Oh. Now my internet's gone out. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know which one you're talking about. That one. That was yeah. That was on. Um, on Broadway and these people were they were they were pretty much done they had like a few left um so I, I got off my bike and immediately took out my drone and I was like I got this just give me like two minutes <laughs> um and what's crazy and this is and <clears throat> I gotta say um not everybody is you know uh innocent in this um <laughs> I don't I don't like how I, I, I don't like what the Manhattan Times does to my images because it always looks blown out. I don't know why, because the, the original image does not look like this. Um, not to bitch to the Manhattan Times. Manhattan Times is dope. I just, <laughs> just my images always look blown out. Um, but uh, yeah, when they, were, when they were shooting off these fireworks, there was this woman that screamed out the window, I need to fucking sleep! <laughs> <laughs> and their reactions was, and I am not siding with them. Their reaction was, shut the fuck up, go home, Karen. And they kept saying things like that. And I just thought it was a little fucked up. But, you know, I'm not going to fight them. They're not going to fight. I'm just going to capture the fireworks. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm here for the fireworks and not the fight. <laughs> Great. Well, this this next question is is seems perfect timing. Uh, Led Black, you have a, a question, and I think it, it's. Wait. <laughs> uh oh. I want to say what up, everybody. I think you need to talk about your utter fearlessness, right? Because you are a crazy person. Last year, he had me go to his roof. <laughs> It was the most scariest thing I've done as an adult. You know, I, I had a, it was really bad because there was an AC in the way we had it. It was just horrible. 
but this man is just has no fear. He's he's <laughs> utterly insane, and and it's like just being. He's so dedicated to his craft, but he he's a complete nutcase. So <laughs> we can talk about why you're such a nutcase and expound on that, please. That is a interesting way to phrase that question. <laughs> Why are you so nuts? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think, I don't know if with near mirrorless cameras, it's, it's not easy to do this. But if you have a DSLR camera and you look through the, the, the viewfinder and you walk around, um, I mean, I wouldn't suggest you completely just only walk around <laughs> looking through this. But let's say you're on the top of a mountain, right? And you look through the viewfinder and you get close to the edge you don't feel the same feeling you get when you're looking with your eyes. Um, that vertigo feeling, you don't, you don't really necessarily get that. Um, at least I don't. Um, when I look through the viewfinder, um, it just feels like I'm looking at, a, at an image. I'm looking at a photo. And I mean, I know it's just a mirror reflecting what's right there. <laughs> but um, that is basically the description of what I feel when you know, I could jump on some train tracks real quick to put a camera down um, or climb on a rooftop, <laughs> let's say, um, and get on the edge or like on the Brooklyn Bridge, there was some, there was some images, <clears throat> which you can't tell that I did this, but uh, you know how the Brooklyn Bridge has the beam going across the top of the, the, the road? Um, I climbed onto one, uh, onto one of them and I slid over. And I, the only reason I didn't slide all the way to the middle was because the beam was really narrow. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I know physically I wouldn't be able to balance myself well there, but I did climb up and I know lead would have gone crazy if, I, if you saw me do that. Um, but these are things that I just, if I see an image, if I see the picture in my mind, I'm going to go for it. Um, but I'm also not, I'm crazy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> so so I, I know like, you know, if there's a car coming at me at 110 miles per hour, I'm not going to stand in front of it. But if the car is a mile away and I could see that it won't get to me in 30 seconds, then maybe I'll get in the way. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's all in the pursuit of images, man. <laughs> now, now I understand. That's a great question. And now I understand why um, you said you were looking forward to the rapid fire question segment. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean that's you know that's 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 cake right all right so let's let's do it because I know you were sort of game for this are you ready yes I haven't actually looked at the question from before so I I'm going well, good. To... okay so here we go what are this is a softball one right what are you most looking forward to post quarantine being able to travel yeah easy Definitely being able to travel. As Veronica pointed out, that might be a while because we are not being allowed uh, into other places these days. So, but let's look forward to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you currently binge watching or binge listening to or binge reading? What are you up uh, to? Everything. Um, <laughs> well, what's interesting is that many people during COVID, um, understandably so, have more free time. You know, they lost their jobs, they, they have to stay at home with their kids. And there's so many reasons why people are staying at home. I fortunately um, have had more work to do, not more jobs, but more work to do because um, Word Up, uh, Word Up Community Bookshop, www.wordupbooks.com. Um, <laughs> we've had a huge increase in online orders and that's kind of my main thing. So managing that, um, I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even give you a percentage of how much it has increased, how much the traffic has increased, um, to the point where I, I, I got so behind on, um, on orders that each page of the back end has 30, 30 orders. Um, at one point, there were about 10 pages of pending orders, you know, and I had to go through each one. And Veronica is shipping out a bunch of them and, and you know, I'm manually processing a bunch of them. 
Um, so between both of us and Carolina, um, who also is doing a bunch of work at the store and, and online, um, doing all this work, I mean, I'm not, I'm not upset at it at all, but the, the conversation of like, you know, oh my God, I've, I learned how to play guitar and, <laughs> and I'm binge watch, you know, all of Netflix. I, I honestly haven't had time to do that. I have been watching shows though, because you can't take television away from me. I just got a new TV during COVID. So, <laughs> um, but the most recent show I just started watching yesterday uh, is, uh, I think it's Undone on Amazon, mm -hmm. um, which is dope. I didn't know it was about a Mexican uh, woman or half Mexican, but whatever. Um, anything with Latinos, I'm for it. Um, <laughs> And it's just a dope show. It, it, I've only watched two episodes so far, so I, I highly recommend it as far as the first two episodes. <laughs> Thanks for the recommendation. All right. Um, what do you find funny? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let Bess put his hands up. <laughs> Uh-oh. We got a timeout signal. I don't know about that. It's a family show, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry for the cursing, by the way. I, I kind of, I didn't ask if I could curse, and I have definitely been cursing, so my bad. Um, <laughs> what do I find funny? I mean, you name it. It's like, I find everything funny. I, I honestly feel like if, if it wasn't photography, I would have tried comedy. I probably would have sucked at it, but I definitely would have tried it, because I find humor in everything. Um, <laughs> Yes, Mike. Yeah, saying. Mike. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I encourage you to read your 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 chat comments. I really do. <laughs> when you have a chance. I, I'm looking at some comments and I want to I want to respond, but you know. I don't be <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right. This is a tough question. I think. What is your favorite place in New York City or in Uptown? Oh, that's not fair. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I say one thing, then it you know. Uh, well, what you, one of your favorites today, at this moment? Okay, but this stays between me and everybody here and everybody that watches on YouTube only, okay? Right, <laughs> and Facebook Live and, and <laughs> Instagram and everywhere else. Okay, promise. Uh, this is one spot on, in Fort Washington Park um, where there's kind of a piece of concrete that kind of comes out into the river and it's right next to this like beach area. Um, where a lot of people, you know, uh, fish and, and swim in the supposedly clean water. Um, <laughs> uh, that piece of concrete is very uncomfortable to sit on, but has my favorite view of the George Washington Bridge in Jersey. And not many people are out there, you know, post sunset. Um, so it's, it's one of my favorite spots to just go there and get away from everything. And I imagine that the Henry Hudson, um, cars passing by the cars on the henry hudson passing by is just another body of water you know crashing waves that's what that's why i like to imagine so it's it's a very therapeutic place for me to chill in and you know take pictures and listen to music and you know but nobody take that away from me <laughs> yeah, you probably should keep that quiet right um okay all right here we go you're having a dinner party you can invite three guests Living, dead, real, fictional. Who are they, and what are you serving on the menu? So this one I did think about because Liz Ritter had she? Such a heartbreaking <laughs> answer to this, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "Oh, that's so good!" <laughs> uh, she really set the bar high last oh week God. with that one. Like, I was like, "Oh no, why did you do this?" Um, yeah, but okay. So I thought, the, my first thought was Donald Trump and Hitler, just because I want to see them go at it. Wow, okay. <laughs> Not because I want to, look, I love them or anything. I just want to see them go at it, you know? Um, but that's really not who I will invite. <laughs> it's um, hard to come up with a menu for that one, I think. <laughs> and let me not go there. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I, I don't know. I thought about it, but I couldn't come up with a real answer. Um, and I can't really turn the camera right now, but I have three 
people right here, actually four, but um, the images I have right here are uh, three heroes taking pictures. Um, and one of them is Barack Obama. Um, the other one is Malcolm X taking a picture of M Muhammad Ali. And the other one is Che Guerrero. Um, so I thought, not only would I want them over for dinner, <laughs> but I would want to go on a photo walk with them. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't necessarily cook anything. I would have them eat some patelitos from the street and go to Chalk NYC and get some dessert. <laughs> And definitely go to Word Up to get some books. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There, there are some interesting uh, suggestions in the chat group if you're interested. Um, okay. <laughs> the title of your biography, what would that be? The title of my biography? Oh, my God. Yeah. Why would anybody write that? Um, <laughs> 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 I think that's the title. <laughs> <laughs> why would anybody write this? Why, why did I write this? That's the title. <laughs> oh, uh, Len has a suggestion. Yes. So, um, <laughs> my <little uncle. laughs> some ideas there. So, <laughs> okay. All right. What is, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Oh, shit. Um, oh, my God. Damn, that's a good one. I like that one. I'm stalling. <laughs> <laughs> perfect happiness. That's one. I know what happiness is. I don't know what perfect happiness is. I think I think perfect happiness is the combination of all the happinesses in my life together. So that would be being in a foreign country, being in another country, I don't want to say foreign, being in another country, um, meeting people I don't know who have the same sense of adventure as me with the person I love and having my camera to the side, on my side. Very fantastic answer. <laughs> That's great. Good job with that. That's a tough one. That's a great answer. Okay. Huh. I, I might be able to. Okay. Invisibility or ability to fly? Ability to fly. I had a feeling. I thought that was kind of a, a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. Okay. What do you consider your, your, your um, best or your greatest achievement? Uh, see, this is why it was hard to write the bio, because I feel like I, I don't have that. I don't have something that, like, I think for, for, for y'all, I mean, you, I, I'm sure, because you love me, <laughs> you have, like, things that I've done in my life that you're like, dude, but this is so dope, or, you know, but um, I don't think I have something that I did. I think the greatest achievement I've ever been a part of is Word Up. Uh, and that's mostly Veronica, like 90% Veronica Lou. Um, but just being part of that, if I died right now, and I hope I don't, but if I died right now, I would die happy knowing that that place exists. You know, and my will will say everything goes to Word Up. <laughs> that's beautiful. And I don't have kids yet, so that's why it goes to Word Up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's your here's the last one. What is your motto or your words to live by? I'm a little nervous about your answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um oh there's a there's a quote by oh my god, what's his name? Uh most of you will know this, and I don't I don't know the exact quote, and I forget the author's name. He's a very famous author. Um and he said, you won't, you won't know how far you can go until you go, until you, what is it? You won't know how far you can go until you 
cross the line or something. Come on, one of you knows this. Somebody write in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> that is not Dr. Seuss. <laughs> you can't know. You can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. No, not that one. <laughs> it's 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 a sense of you will you basically you don't know where the line is until you cross there or something like that. Anyway, the point is, I always try. Um, and not always try. I I I. Uh, I don't ask permission, I ask forgiveness. Let me just leave it with that one. <laughs> like that. Okay, that's wonderful. Those were so great. Um, this has been a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and really, uh, truly, it's, it's been fantastic to see um, your work, to hear your stories, um, and, and to feel your spirit and your energy, especially now. Um, really, this, this is this, we couldn't ask for a better time right now to, to hear um, mm -hmm. all of that you've shared with us tonight. So thank you for that. Um, and I wanted to thank everybody for being here tonight um, and for joining us and for sharing and for asking questions and for leaving such um, colorful comments um, in the chat room as well. Thank you all for your participation. This evening. Also, if you haven't completed your 2020 census, now is a great time to do so, and it's so easy to do. It takes two minutes online at uh, my2020census.gov. Tomorrow, Friday, July 3rd, watch Hamilton on Disney Plus, Lynn Manuel's Miranda Hamilton, the musical. Disney Plus delivers the original and Broadway production of Hamilton tomorrow on Disney Plus. Please join them and enjoy an absolutely outstanding program on Friday. Also, please read this week's Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance newsletter on our website, nomanyc.org. That's N-O-M-A-A-N-Y-C.org. It has a absolutely tremendous amount of information on artist opportunities, events, and open studios, and other uh, information that we would like to share with the Uptown Arts community, including Inwood Artworks on air and uh, their hyper-local podcast with musicians and uh, uh, filmmakers and more. We encourage you to check out our website for the details on that. Harlem School of the Arts and their summer camp, a four-week virtual camp for young artists. The Dance Theater of Harlem and their free live classes on their YouTube channel. Word Up, our great friends at Word Up, say more. Open mic with artists of all genres are coming in the weeks and uh, months ahead. Please check out our website and our newsletter for further information. Marjorie Elliott for almost 30 years. Marjorie Elliott's uh, Parlor Jazz every Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Catch up with Marjorie this Sunday at 3.30. Uptown Palante with our great friends Mino Lora and Led Black. Thank you, Led, for joining us this evening. Every Monday at 9.30 a.m. Mino and Lora will bring you Uptown Palante. See our website and our newsletter for uh, that and their upcoming programs. And finally, join us next Thursday, July 9th at 7.30 for our next Stay Home Open Studio with Rosa Naparstek, Artist Unite founder and 2018 Upstown Art Stroll honoree sponsored by the Omri Foundation. That's the next Uptown, uh, Uptown Art Stroll Stay Home Open Studio with Rosa Naparstek, July 9th at 7.30. And we want to wish everybody a very happy and great July 4th weekend. And thank you for joining us this evening. Martin, thank you, Emmanuel. Thanks to everybody. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and we'll see you back next week. Take care, everyone. Thank everybody for coming. I love you all.